think the game kind of turned for you a little bit in the second quarter when you kind of got your foot yeah. Yeah, obviously it wasn't the start of the game that we uh, we had anticipated and hoped for. Uh, but to your point, Chris, I think we closed that second quarter 20 to five, cut it to three points, knowing that we did not play a good half of basketball. Um, but you know, I, I felt our bench really got us going in that first half. Christian came in, his energy, his offensive rebounding, coming up with loose balls. I thought Ish, Jeff, DJ, I thought that group was really effective. Um, but to close 20 to five gets us in striking distance, and that start of the third quarter, I think it was 12 to two. They called a timeout, and uh, we just kind of took control of the game right away. Um, second half, they shot 36 percent from the field, only 45 points. Uh, we had 78 in their paint, 35 assists, 14 turnovers. So, uh, lots of great numbers across the board, and a lot of guys stepped up and contributed. Jokic broke his own record for triple doubles. Was this 19 20, tonight? 20. 20 tonight. And are we 20 and 0 or 19 and 1? 20 and 0. 20 and 0. You know, that's for all the people that say those stats are empty. Nicola's stats are empty. But meanwhile, when he has a triple double, we win. We're 20 and 0. So I'd say they're pretty impactful stats. But I, I interrupted you. I apologize. No, okay. I just was going to say a lot of people said with a healthy Jamal Murray, I've seen him play tonight, but in a healthy Michael Porter Jr., his stats might go down or he might not be as impactful because he has the support. The fact that he's already had 20 triple doubles, and he's, I find it hard to ask you questions about him because we talk about him every night, but what has he been doing this year that has allowed him to have production like that night in and night out? Well, I think the one number that's really in improved, increased, and uh, is historic in nature is the assist per game. Uh, obviously, he's going to finish the year uh, with by far the most assists per game for a center in NBA history. And so what do you attribute that to? You attribute that to a healthy Jamal and Michael. You, you attribute that to adding a guy like KCP, who was amongst the league leaders in three-point percentage. So if you have weapons like that around Nikola, if you're the opposing coach, you have a choice to make. Is it a one-on-one -on -one coverage or is it a double team? And the best thing about Nikola is he never fights the game. And that, that, I hope people understand that. Like Some people fight the game. They force it. Uh, and the defense will always tell you what to do, and Nicola realizes that. So they put two on him tonight. He's going to make the right pass every time. There are times, like I told him tonight, like, listen, sometimes you got to be aggressive before the double team gets there, put pressure on their defense, get to the foul line. But um, it's just amazing, the IQ, the unselfishness, uh, and just the understanding of the game and being steps ahead of everybody else. Michael had a tough shooting night in Orlando. Starting the first half 0 for 6, I think 6 of 8 in the second half. Yeah. Your offense, especially when he's hitting shots, seemed to really, really quick. Well, I, I just, you know, shouted him out in the locker room because I felt in the Orlando game, um, and he wasn't the only one, but he, he let the fact that he was struggling to make shots impact his game. And in that second half tonight, you know, we, we went to switch the matchup on Gordon Hayward, who had a really good first half. And Michael said, no, let me guard him. I, I want to guard him. Give me another chance. And so instead of Michael feeling sorry for himself, 0 for 6 from the field, he went out there and said, OK, I can do other things. And that's a conversation that Michael and I had on the plane the other day. Like, you're too good of a player just to be worried about your jump shot. It's not going to go in every night. When it doesn't, challenge yourself to find other ways to help your team. And I thought a marked difference, Scott, from first half to second half in Michael's energy and uh, his willingness to help this team win a game on the road. Yeah, I mean, and you know, give them some credit because they, they were, you know, flying around all over the place, running us off the line. So you have to take what the defense gives you. But um, I think you always have to play with an attack mindset and not a settle mindset. And so when you have chances to attack the basket, like I thought just the, the starting five in that third quarter, everybody was aggressive. I mean, Nicola was aggressive. KCP was driving to the basket. Bruce was driving to the basket. Michael, Vlatko. I thought Vlatko did a really nice job tonight filling in for Aaron Gordon. Um, but, you know, uh, I think too often in today's NBA, it's such a settle for the three mindset at times. And you let the other team off the hook, especially when you're not making shots. Like, you know, to your point, Katie, 5 of 23. So, um, yes, we struggled to make and take threes tonight, but 51 from the field, 78 in the paint. 
and I think uh, 16 in transition. So we did some other things at a high level. I noticed Thomas Bryant was up cheering for the team like he's been a part of this team all season long. Do you think he's going to have any problems fitting in? Not at all. Uh, you know what? I, I think guys that have a hard time fitting in are, are guys that are me guys, guys that are not work guys. Um, and so for a guy like Thomas Bryant, I, I think he's going to be accepted right away because everybody knows his body of work. They've all competed against him. They know that guy brings a ton of energy, um, and he's going to do whatever he can to help a team win. So I didn't feel right to throw him out there in the rotation tonight because of what he's gone through in the last 24, 48 hours. But, um, you know, come Miami, you know, he's we brought him in here for a reason. You know, he's going to be in the rotation, and uh, we're really excited to have him. Yeah, I mean, that's, as you mentioned, you know, um, whether we're playing against Joel Embiid or uh, Mark Williams, like Nicole's an MVP. And so he, he's a focus, uh, especially with Jamal out, and the hub of everything that we do. Um, knowing that Mason Plumlee's not here uh, and you have younger guys, yeah, you, you want to try to go at them, test them, and give them credit. Those guys are long, they're athletic, they're active. Um, you know, they had a couple of block shots. They had eight blocks as a team. Um, and as I said pregame, you know, Mark Williams is only going to get better by playing and playing through his mistakes. You know, Nick Richards getting an opportunity to play meaningful minutes off the bench will get better by playing against guys like Nikola Jokic. So, um, you know, sometimes it's, you know, we always say in the NBA, you got to get baptized. You know, young guys have to go through the fires of getting their ass kicked once in a while. And that's how you learn. That's how you improve. And that's how you get better. And Nikola went through the same thing. So it's not like it's just certain players. It is everybody has to go through that rite of passage. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, everybody.